Good evening and welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. We are in video number 31 of our study of Matthew 16, 27 and 28, where we have been demonstrating a first century AD 70 second coming of Christ. Now, what I want to begin to do uh, this evening is begin to investigate how the writers of the New Testament, including Jesus, who obviously was not a writer, but we want to look how G at how Jesus and the writers of the New Testament interpreted Matthew 16, 27, and 28 to be a second coming prophecy, which they themselves anticipated to be fulfilled in their lifetime. Now, up to this point, we have shown that several Old Testament prophecies, such as Daniel 7, uh, Isaiah 59, Isaiah 40, and Isaiah 62, all serve as a primary prophetic source for the coming of the Son of Man in Matthew 16, 27 and 28, and that those prophecies anticipated the second coming of Christ. And that means that Matthew 16, 27 and 28, in fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy, prophesied the second coming of Christ, which Jesus placed within the lifetime of his first century disciples. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the flip side of that coin. We're going to see how the New Testament writers, including Jesus, drew from Matthew 16, 27 and 28, and interpreted that prophecy to speak of the second coming of Christ, which they themselves also placed within the first century generation. So we're going to see how both Old Testament prophecy and New Testament prophecy identifies the coming of the Son of Man in Matthew 16, 27, 28 as the second coming of Christ, which they both place within the lifetime of Christ's contemporary generation. To begin with, I want to go to Revelation 22 this evening. Now, before we get there, Turn with me to Matthew 16, and let me read verse 27, and then we'll look at Revelation 22, 12, and we'll see perfect uh, linguistic parallels between these two prophecies. Jesus said this in Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man is going, literally from the Greek word mellow, the Son of Man is about to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and will then repay every man according to his deeds. That phrase is significant. The Son of Man would repay every man according to his deeds. Listen to how Revelation 22.12 puts this. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. That is a verbatim quote from Matthew 16.27. The Son of Man coming quickly correlates to the Son of Man about to come. And this rendering to every man according to what his deeds correlates to repaying every man according to his deeds. Perfectly parallel. What that means is, Revelation 22 and the second coming of Christ, which no one denies that that, that that text speaks of, drew from Matthew 16, 27 and the coming of the Son of Man. That means that the coming of the Son of Man in Matthew 16, 27 and 28 prophesied the second coming of Christ, which we would, would be fulfilled in Revelation 22, 12, which Jesus himself placed within the lifetime of his first century disciples. But let's not go so fast. I want to take a look at both of these passages in the larger context and see that they're not just grammatically parallel, they're thematically parallel, which means, which, which, which further emphasizes the point that Revelation 20 to 12 was in fact drawing from Matthew 16, 27, 28. Notice this. I'm going to read from a parallel chart, which I will post on the website. So you can have a visual of this. But notice these parallels from both of these prophecies. Both concern the coming of the Son of Man. We have the coming of uh, the Son of Man in Matthew 16, 27 and 28. We have the coming of Jesus in Revelation uh, 22, verses 7, 12 and 20. Both concern uh, his coming in the glory of the Father. That is in Revelation, uh, sorry, that is in Matthew 16, 27. And not in Revelation 22, but obviously in a larger context, in Revelation 19, 11 to 16, it is the Son of Man coming in all his glory. Okay? Revela Revelation uh, 22 and Matthew 16, they both concern the coming of the Son of Man to reward or repay every man according to their deeds. That means that this is a vindicative judgment. He is coming to repay those who had persecuted him and his disciples. We find that in Matthew 16, 27, in the larger context. And in Revelation 20, uh, 22, his coming to repay or to render every man according to their deeds would be following the judgment of Babylon, those guilty of shedding his blood and the blood of his saints. Vindicative comings in both, in both prophecies. 
Next parallel, they both concern the coming of the Son of Man to establish the kingdom. We see that in uh, uh, Reve uh, Matthew 16, 28, and we see that in Revelation 22, 14, and 19. And finally, both texts concern the time element, the element of time that limits both prophecies to the first century generation. In Matthew 16, Jesus places his coming in the glory of his Father to repay every man according to his deeds, while some of those who were standing there had not tasted death in Jesus' generation. Well, John says that this coming, in the same context, for the same purpose, was to take place soon, near, and quickly from the time when he wrote the book. And we find that in Revelation 22, verses 6, 7, 10, 12, and 20. What that means is that undeniably, the prophecy of the second coming of Christ in Revelation 12, he was coming quickly to reward every man according to his deeds, was drawn from Matthew 16, 27, and 28, and the coming of the Son of Man. But that means the coming of the Son of Man in Matthew 16, 27, and 28 did prophesy the second coming of Christ, which both John and Jesus placed within the lifetime of their own generation. That is undeniable. Now, here's one more point before we close. When, when, John, uh, when John limits this coming in Revelation 22 to soon, near, and quickly, uh, Jesus himself in Matthew 16, 27, and 28 identifies what those terms mean. You see, because there are parallel prophecies, soon, near, and quickly concerning the coming of the Lord means in the lifetime of Jesus' first century generation before some of those who, who were standing there had tasted death. Soon, near, and quickly doesn't mean rapidly at the exclusion of near in time. It means soon, near, and quickly within that first century generation. The coming of the Son of Man, that is the second coming of Christ in Matthew 16, 27 and 28 was the second coming of Christ of Revelation 22, 12. And Jesus and John placed that coming to establish the kingdom, to reward the saints, to judge the wicked in the lifetime of their own contemporary generation. That's all for this evening. We'll pick this up next time and we'll identify Revelation 22.12 and the coming of Christ in that context as the coming at the end of the millennium and the judgment of the dead of Revelation 22. It's going to be good. Don't miss it. We'll see you next time on Answers on Eschatology. Have a great night and bye for now.